Question number one. What is the action of medial rectus? One, abduction. Two, adduction. Three, elevation. And four, depression. Medial rectus muscle is a muscle which works to keep the pupil closer to the midline of the body. It helps to move the eyeball medially. Question number 2. Inferior rectus originates from 1. Trachula 2. Annulus of sin 3. Spinoid bone and 4. Maxillary bone Annulus zin is a dense fibrous ring of connective tissue located at the apex of the orbit that is origin of four of the six extraocular muscles that is superior rectus, inferior rectus, lateral rectus, and medial rectus. Question number 3. Superior oblique originates from 1. Maxillary bone 2. Oculomotor nerve 3. Annulus of zin and 4. Body of sphenoid bone Superior oblique originates from the body of sphenoid bone, medial to the origin of levator palpebra superior muscle, and superior nozzle to the optic canal. Question number 4. When eye rotates towards the nose and down, which muscle is involved in this rotatory movement? 1. Superior oblique, 2. Superior rectus, 3. Inferior oblique, and 4. Inferior rectus. Superior oblique is the longest muscle in this group that produces eye movement, which directs the gaze inferior nasally by abducting, depressing, and internally rotating the eye. Question number 5. Muscle which moves the eye laterally is 1. Superior rectus, 2. Inferior rectus, 3. Medial rectus, and 4. Lateral rectus. Lateral rectus muscle is a muscle on the lateral side of the eyeball in the orbit that is responsible for lateral movement of the eyeball, specifically abduction. Question number 6. Which muscle elevates the eye, turn it laterally and innervate it by third cranial nerve? 1. Inferior oblique, 2. Superior oblique, 3. Superior rectus, and 4. Inferior rectus. Inferior oblique muscle is a thin narrow muscle placed near the anterior margin of the floor of the orbit. It originates from maxillary bone and innervated by third cranial nerve. Question number 7. What is the primary, secondary, and tertiary action of the inferior rectus respectively? 1. Depression, extortion, and abduction. 2. Depression, intorsion, and adduction. 3. Depression, extortion, and adduction. And four, none of these. Question number eight. What are the extrinsic muscles of the eye? One, medial rectus. Two, spinster muscle. Three, dilator muscle. And four, ciliary muscle. Extrinsic eye muscle are muscles that are present within the orbit but outside the eyeball and mainly control the movement of the eye. Question number 9. Which cranial nerve innervates the superior oblique muscle? 1. Oculomotor nerve. 2. Abducens nerve. 3. Trachular nerve. And 4. None of these. Superior oblique is the only extraocular muscle that receives its innervation through the trochlear nerve. Trochlear nerve is the only cranial nerve that emerges from the posterior aspect of brain steam. Question number 10. Which muscle is not innervated by oculomotor nerve? 
one superior rectus, two inferior oblique, three lateral rectus, and four medial rectus. Oculomotor innervates the majority of the extraocular muscles. Levator palpebrae superus, superior rectus, inferior rectus, medial rectus, and inferior oblique. Question number 11. Which is the shortest extraocular muscle? 1. Superior rectus, 2. Superior oblique, 3. Inferior rectus, and 4. Inferior oblique. Inferior oblique is the shortest of all extraocular muscle, having approximately 37 mm length. Question number 12. Which part of the brain controls eye muscle? 1. Midbrain, 2. Pons, 3. Medulla oblongata, and 4. Cerebellum. Pons is the deep part of the brain located in the brain stem. The pons contains many of the control areas for eye and face movements. Question number 13. Which arteries supply blood for all the extraocular muscle? 1. The muscular branch of ophthalmic artery. 2. The lacrimal artery. 3. The infraorbital artery. And 4. All of above. Question number 14. If a patient presents with ptosis, which nerve and muscle are likely to be affected? 1. Elpis muscle and trochlear nerve. 2. Elpis muscle and abducens nerve. 3. Elpis muscle and oculomotor nerve. And 4. None of these. The eyelid is held up by the levator purpurbis superior muscle, which is innervated by the oculomotor nerve. Thus, damage to cranial nerve 3 can result in muscle paralysis as well as ptosis. Question number 15. If the patient is unable to abduct his right eye, which nerve and muscle are likely to be affected? 1. Lateral rectus and abducens nerve. 2. Medial rectus and abducens nerve. 3. Lateral rectus and oculomotor nerve. And 4. Medial rectus and oculomotor nerve. Lateral rectus moves the eye laterally, which is innervated by abducens nerve, sixth cranial nerve. Thus, damage to sixth cranial nerve can result in lateral rectus palsy. <laughs>